Lesson 9 is on number lines. And a number line, that's a way to show the order of numbers, what order they go in from least to greatest. And usually on a number line, of course, you start with a line. A line is looks like this with arrows on the end of it. And then on this number line, you put things that you call tick marks, little vertical marks that you call tick marks. And it kind of makes it look like a ruler. And it doesn't, you can put all different kinds of numbers on a number line as long as they're in order. And so let me just start with a negative number, negative 3. And then you go from least to greatest. So we need to increase from negative 3. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now the arrows on the end, that means that the number line continues on forever and ever in those directions. So of course we're limited in space by how big we can make a number line on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper. Now one thing to keep in mind, a number line, all it is is just a way to order numbers from least to greatest. I've drawn an example of a number line on the board. Not all number lines start with negative 3 and end at 7. I mean, you could have one that went from 1 to 15 or 10 to 12. It just, that doesn't matter. It's the, the thing to remember is that a number line is a way to order numbers from least to greatest. For example, look at this practice problem A that I have on the board here. Let's arrange these four amounts of money from least to greatest. Well, let's just look at them. We have $35, $3.50, $350.35. Now that $0.35, cents, we could think of that in dollar amounts instead of in cents. And we could say $0.35 dollars. Now you don't have to do this, but you can just think of a number line in your head if you want to. I'm going to draw one on the board and just help me think about least to greatest. Least is on the left, greatest to the right. And so the 35 cents or .35 dollars would be on the left side. and this number line that I'm drawing, it's not to scale or anything. It's just an example. It's just to help me think about least to greatest. Least on the left, greatest to the right. And so 350 would go next. And then $35 would go next. And then finally the 350. And so now I've ordered those from least to greatest. And so what I used the number line for was a tool. I used the number line as a tool to help me figure out which number was least and which was greatest. Now what we've been doing here with this number line, it's comparing numbers, larger and smaller quantities. And there are other ways that we use to compare numbers or a pair of numbers. And we use symbols such as a greater than symbol, a less than symbol, and an equal sign. When two numbers are the same value, we say that they are equal to each other. When one's bigger than the other one, we say that it's greater than. When one's smaller than the other, we say it's less than. Now think about this. If we said had a 6, we said 6 is greater than 2. That's how we say that statement. 6 is greater than 2. And normally we read that left to right. Now, something else to think about there, we could read that problem right to left. We would say that 2 is less than 6. So when we're working with these values, these inequalities, we can say 6 is greater than 2. We can read them left to right or right to left. The normal way, the standard way that you read them is left to right. And you use these symbols to compare two quantities. That's what they're for. So let's do a couple more problems dealing with comparing numbers. Now what I want you to do in this practice problem B is to compare the values, the operation to the left of that big circle with the values or the operation to the right of that circle. 
And what I want you to do in, as far as comparing them is, are they greater? Is the left side greater than the right side? Is the left side less than the right side? Or is the left side equal to the right side? So let's go ahead and just do the operations on the left and the right side first and simplify those into one number. And so let's work left to right on the left operation. Add in pairs. 10 minus 5 is 5. And then plus 4. 5 plus 4 is 9. And then on the right side we have 10 plus 5 is 15 minus 4. That would be 11. So 9 is less than 11. And so that would be our answer there. 9 is less than 11. Let's try another one. This one has multiplication and division in the operations. Compare the left operation with the right operation. So first let's simplify. And we can just do these in our head. 2 times 4 is 8 times 2 is 16. And then on the right we have 2 times 4 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. So this time the left side is greater than the right side. So we say 16 is greater than 4. Let's do another one. Remember when you do more multiple types of the same problem, or multiple problems of the same type, I mean, when you do that, pause the CD, see if you can work them yourself, and then fast forward to the answer and see if you got them right. If you got them wrong, go back and rewind and see what you did wrong. So on D, compare 4 times 3 and 4 plus 3. So 4 times 3 is 12. 4 plus 3 is 7. So 12 is greater than 7. And so that's our answer there. 12 is greater than 7. Practice problem E. Look at this one. Compare 2 times 2 and 2 plus 2. Well, that's just going to be 4 and 4. Those are going to be equal. So comparing those two, those two quantities are equal. Let's do one more practice problem. Practice problem F. Look at what I've written there. One sixth is less than two thirds. Can you write that using numbers and symbols? Like a less than symbol and then fractions for the two numerical values there? Why don't you go ahead and do that? So you'd have one sixth is less than, so you'd put a less than symbol there, two thirds. So that's how you'd write that using numbers and symbols, an inequality symbol there, the less than symbol. Okay, well that's all for lesson nine.